Everything and welcome to the Montrose United Methodist Church. It's a great night to be together. Good Amen. evening and welcome to the Montrose United Methodist Church. I've been pastor here ever since July 9th, 2012. <laughs> been a really good turn so far. <laughs> Everything's going great. Well, you know, I was in Rotary today. Craig Wolverton's been inviting me to Rotary, and, and the president told this. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but the story about this couple who had a couple of boys, they were twins, and they went off to college, and uh, one was named one was named Amal, and one was named Juan, and um, gosh, you know, Juan sent a picture, a photo of himself from college, and the dad's like, hey, you know, we need a picture of our other son, too. And the, um, the mom said, hey, wait a minute, they're twins. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. <laughs> and you may come to this place thinking that if you've seen a group like this before, you've seen them all. I have a feeling you're in for quite a surprise because this group is amazing. I got to meet them this morning. They are so delightful, respectful. They even talk to old people. And I appreciate that. And uh, they're taking great care of each other in this facility. You know, I think there's 54 of the youth. Is that right? And, and 18 of the adult and chaperone and so forth. The adults and chaperones, those 18, look around, you'll see the people who look like they're almost about to fall over. <laughs> That's them. That's what they told me. We got to find them that way. So really, so glad to have them here. Uh, you know, i got a chance here. I've got a, an audience here. I've got to share this. Psalm 50. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sound of trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and the lyre. Praise Him with the tambourine and dancing. <laughs> Praise Him with the strings and the flute. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. I should have had these queued up. Huh? Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath, that has spirit, that has the wind. Praise the Lord. Would you all say, Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. <laughs> Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for bringing us this time together. We thank you for blessing the talents of these people that are all around us that will be blessing us to uh, be inspired by the gifts that you give us. And we pray that this would not be the end of that inspiration, that we would come from this place with a new outlook on how we may, might use our gifts in the way that those before us are sharing theirs. We all have a gift. God, thank you that you've made, you love variety. And you've given us all a special gift to share. May we be inspired to do just that wherever we are, whatever circumstance, God. Now bless this group. Thank you for guiding them in heart and soul and mind and spirit. And be their director as they go through this wonderful program tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now I've got to, I want to, I am pleased to introduce to you Mr. Craig Wolverton, who's going to share some very special and important news about where your donations are going tonight. Craig. Thanks, Craig. Woo! All right. I want to thank uh, not only the cast members, but all of the audience, because uh, tonight uh, this is a fundraiser for Passage Charter School, which was a choice by the um, Montrose uh, UMC Youth Group. And for those of you who don't know, while I'm also a member here of the church, I'm a board member at Passage Charter School. And it's a unique high school, it's part of our school district, but it is for pregnant and parenting teens. And it has done a great job, I think, over the past 10 years of helping to break this cycle of um, young girls getting pregnant, dropping out of the education system, not, not just high school, but dropping out of the education system altogether. And we have approximately 25 students for, enrolled for this fall, and it focuses on academics, so they earn a high school degree. It also focuses on uh, parenting skills. There's a nursery on premises, and uh, these parents, there are, it's mostly girls, but a few boys are there as well, um, focus not only on getting their education, but on learning how to raise their child. And then it also uh, focuses on vocational skills. We really try to help um, the students get jobs, uh, get job training, that sort of thing. And so, again, on behalf of Passage Charter School, I want to thank all of you for uh, choosing Passage for, as your fundraiser tonight. Yeah. 
Wow, that sounds like an awesome, awesome program. We are very glad to be supporting that. My name is Dirk DeMonte, and uh, I'm the Minister of Music and Worship Arts at the Los Altos United Methodist Church in Los Altos, California. My wife Carol and I are the directors of this wonderful group of young people, and uh, we've written the show, the project that we're about to share with you. Uh, it's great being with you. We, we are so thankful for, for the wonderful warm welcome for you uh, basically letting us take over the facilities for a couple of days. And, and thank you so much for, for the awesome dinner you, you shared with us, right guys? <laughs> it's always nice to be well fed. We are just so, so grateful for the incredible hospitality you've shared with us. And it's great to be here. This is a new, a new stop for us on our uh, Colorado Rocky Mountain tour, and I have a feeling this isn't the last time that we'll be with you here in Montrose. We're just uh, so happy to be with you. We, we wrote the show, Carol and I wrote the show, The Project, last year as a response to the United Methodist Church's Rethink Church uh, program. You may have heard about the Rethink Church that's come out of the United Methodist Church, where we're being encouraged to think of church in new ways and think of ourselves as the church in new ways by doing things like the, the charter school, where we are are being the church beyond just the walls of the church, where, where worship inspires us to go out into the world and to be the, the hands and the feet and the love of God in the world and to be the body of Christ in, in a world that so desperately needs to hear that good news. And this show is, is one way that we have responded to that call and one way uh, to, to be thinking about uh, what it means to be the church in the world. And uh, we've had a really good time. This is, we left Los Altos uh, a week ago today, and we've been a uh, little bit through California and, and have had a really great time here in the beautiful state of Colorado. Our congregation has been holding Colorado in our prayers as you've been grappling with the wildfires last month and, of course, with the tragedy in Aurora this month. And it's, uh, it's, it's good that we can, can celebrate our connection and that we can honor that we are together as United Methodists and as Christians that we do uh, as the body of Christ, we do hold each other in prayer and in love and in connection. So thank you so much for having us. Uh, we are delighted to be part of the offering and, and to be supporting the, the charter school. We, each church we go to, including our own, has, has designated a place for the offering of, of each performance to go. And, and towards the end of the show, you'll see we, we lift up each, each place the offerings have gone and are going on this tour. And, You'll see those, those lifted up in, in a real special way. And then at the end of the performance, we will be taking an offering. And we're really, as I say, delighted to be partnering in, in this wonderful cause. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your hospitality. And now it is our pleasure to present to you the project. church wasn't just a building, but thousands of doors, each of them opening up to a journey that could actually change the world, which you come with. Rethink Church, the people of the United Methodist Church. Church, let the church bells ring. Together, a hundred year old song will sing.
I'd rejoice and be glad to be anywhere but here. I hear you. If the Lord made this day, I bet he's spending it somewhere else. Yeah, like the beach, or the park, or the game. Anywhere but here. Are there any announcements? Yes, Pastor. We are still looking for a few more volunteers for our church cleanup day. Come on, guys. Let's really spruce this place up. Uh, Pastor, as head of the annual stewardship campaign, I need to report that we're still way behind on pledges. We need everyone's support. Uh, yes, well, thank you. If there are no more announcements, then this morning I continue with my 12-part sermon on the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Last week, we explored the first half of the commandment, Honor Your Father. This week, we're going to delve a little deeper by unpacking its second half, Honor Your Mother. Oi, could he possibly make this any more irrelevant to my life? I'm sure he could. Just keep listening because he probably will. He usually does. Just wait until he gets into what it means in the original Hebrew. That's when I know it has an impact on my life. Now, scholars think it's significant that the author of Exodus separated mother and father in his text thereby signifying the significance of both significant patriarchal and matriarchal elements in the Hebraic culture. However, just as last week we examined the emergence of the father figure in ancient times, as true to the patriarchal history of the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Methodeal, Jared, and Eon. <laughs> It's just a bunch of tired old traditions 
and worn out words. There's nothing new there. I don't know. I like my church. Yeah, church is fine with me. I agree, for sure. Count me on that one. I'm with ya. Yeah, I'm cool with church, too. So, some of you like church. Some of you don't. Some of you couldn't care less about it. Most of you are probably somewhere in between. But you know, that's really nothing new. How about we show you how it all began? It's easy.
faithful to the call of God and the Holy Spirit in our lives. And at every step, the reformers weren't trying to start a new church. They were trying to breathe life back into old bones. Exactly. The church struggles with that tension of being a human institution run by humans and being the human and earthly expression of our connection with God. Which seems to be how God wants it. How God wants it? That's just messed up. God wants us to be so confused, getting things wrong, excluding people, and making things about us all the time? That doesn't sound like much of a divine plan. No, of course not. But God wants it to be our community. God wants us to learn how to live in right relationship with each other, with all of God's creation, and with God. God wants us to be the ones to bring the kingdom into fullness here on this earth. See, that's the problem. God's kingdom. What's that supposed to mean? Are we all about not being a kingdom in this country? Are we all supposed to have a voice? Yeah, isn't kingdom just a fancy word for dictatorship? And if God's the king of this kingdom, he's not a very powerful king because everybody here is pretty much just ignoring him. But I thought we were supposed to be getting away from thinking about God as a him, as a king, as an all-powerful man with a white beard looking down from on high. Good job. Those are exactly the kinds of questions we should be asking. You're right, kingdom is an old-fashioned word, and it's about a different place in a different time. But we still use it a lot in church today because it's such a rich part of our tradition. And we find it in things like the Lord's Prayer, you know, thy kingdom come. But if we're going to be doing church in a new way, we need to be thinking of things like kingdom in a new way. Whether we use the same words or not, we just need to think of things differently. Well, maybe since nobody here has any idea of living in a kingdom, we should just Stop using that word. Yeah, especially since we're trying to think of God in new ways. It's more like a new community, a new project, something like that. Exactly. Again, it's about learning to live in relationship with each other, with God's kingdom, with God. In the old days, that was a radical new way to frame the idea of kingdom. Today, it's a radical new way to frame the idea of community. Living as part of God's kingdom here on earth, or God's community all around us, where God's project happening now means living in a whole new way.
institution or place where it all begins and ends. We're about to take you to some unexpected places. Places where the church is alive and is changing the world. Let's go, guys! Got it. Why don't you give me a hand mixing this bit of concrete? I'm on it. I love mixing the concrete. You love this? I do. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> this is like the last thing I'd ever do back home. But here it feels awesome. I know exactly what you mean. It's so different from what we usually do. But something about getting dirty, working hard, and seeing the results right in front of your eyes just makes it all worth it. I'm not a big fan of mixing the concrete, but I love hammering in those nails. We're about ready to get started on the walls. Maybe you and I can sort the number for that? Awesome! We need two 11-footers and eight 8-footers. Let's go! Oh, well, welcome. It looks like you all are here to help. Uh, you three, why don't you go help finish leveling the ground for the slab? And you two, you can help Brent and Scott with the walls. The rest of us, let's start mixing some cement. What? Where are we? We're in Mexico. This is a team helping some of the families here in Mexico to build them a new place to live. Mexico? How do you get here? Yeah, I don't think I'll be attending church in Mexico anytime soon. The people here aren't attending church. Their church building is thousands of miles away. They're here being the church. How are they being the church? I don't see any pews or hymnals. Who's going to give this sermon? Where's the choir? Yeah, and what about the ushers and the offering plates? My dad has always said, Hell will freeze over before church has a service without taking a collection. Well, it does seem that way sometimes, but being the church is very different from just going to church. These guys go to their home church most Sundays, and it probably looks a lot like yours, but they're also committed to taking the message that they sing about and pray about and read about and study about and hear about in church out into the world. Oh, so you mean they're walking the walk, not just talking the talk? Exactly!
Maybe if you cry loud enough, they'll come back from your home planet and pick you up. They won't pick her up. Nobody wants her. She's such a freak. Hey, quit picking on her. Yeah, leave her alone. What did she ever do to you? Get lost. Mind your own business. Where'd you even come from? Who are you anyway? It doesn't matter who we are. You have no right to treat someone that way. Maybe you should go back to where you came from and not stick your nose where it doesn't belong. Aw, oh, forget it. She is not worth the trouble. What a bunch of losers. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. It's all good. Don't worry, I'm used to it. No one should be used to that. Maybe not, but what choice do I have? You could stick up for yourself or hang with your friends so the girls don't corner you like that. Right. Hang with my friends. If I had any, I would. I've been trying to make friends since I moved here, but nobody seems to have room in their circle for me. Really, it's okay. I deal with it. Well, since we're here, we'll deal with it with you. Now, you've got some friends. Now, you're not alone.
So how is that door a door to church? When you all reached out to her, you were being the church. You don't know it, but those girls actually go to church. They show up to youth group most weeks. Those girls are active in church? They sure don't act like it. They sure don't. Going to church doesn't make someone be the church. In order to be the church, we have to live by the values we say we believe, the values that Jesus teaches us. But, but what do you mean, the values that Jesus teaches us? It has to start with the teachings of Jesus. That's where the church began. That needs to be where we begin today. If we're not aligned with Jesus, we're not aligned. And treating someone else like they're not as good as us is not aligned with Jesus' teachings. Not at all. Jesus was always sticking up for the outcasts, for the ones everyone else is picking on, for the ones who have been left out. He used them as examples in his parables, like the Good Samaritan or the Prodigal Son. He reached out to them and lifted them up, like when he had dinner with Zacchaeus, or stood up for the woman who washed his feet with her hair. He showed he cared for them by being willing to touch them and heal them when no one would have anything to do with them. Like when he healed the lepers in the community, Jesus made it clear that God's love is for everyone, especially those who have been turned aside by their governments, their communities, or even their churches. You guys are the first people who have reached out to me, the first people who acted like they care about me, which is what church is supposed to be about. You know, I think I'm starting to get it. Let's see what's next.
are called together to be the church in the world. Sometimes that means building houses for people in Mexico. Sometimes that means being the face of love and tolerance to someone who wasn't seen it anywhere else. Sometimes it means working to change the structures and institutions that are perpetuating injustice and oppression in the world. And sometimes it just means gathering to sing and pray and worship. But how can all of those things be one place in the world? Because it's not just one place. It's all of us, together. Responding to the needs of the world. Well, yes, but not just responding. It's about being the beloved community that Martin Luther King envisioned. Or, like Mother Teresa said, it's not about doing great things, but about doing small things with great love. It's about being who God calls us to be, wherever we are, whatever we're doing. And Martin Luther King and Mother Teresa and thousands and thousands of others who may not be as famous, but who have answered that call, have this in common. They began in the church. And it was in the church that they learned about Jesus and the love of God that Jesus embodies. And it was from the church that they went out into the world to put that love into action and to bring that love to the people the world had turned aside. They brought the church into the world and the world into the church. Come on, there's lots more to see.
in a way, it's really hard because it's made us see how connected we all are and how even here, the clothes or the food we buy impacts everyone and that affects how we live our lives. And the best part is it makes us so connected to our faith. Faith stops being a Sunday thing and becomes the way we live our lives. Isn't that what it's supposed to be? Yeah. We're just about to go into our closing prayer. Feel free to join us. We are disciples on a journey. We are the body of Christ given for this world. Let us quietly pray for one another and for our brothers and sisters in need. Let us again take prayer to heart. Repeat the prayer after me. Give us this day our daily bread. As we this day share daily bread. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from indifference. Thy kingdom come. May this prayer echo in our hearts throughout the week as we walk, while we work, as we rest, and when we pray for one another. Call to mind those who are suffering in despair or fear. Now, we share in the peace for which our world hungers. With a sign of peace, we affirm one another for the journey ahead. May we extend God's love to all. The beauty of a group like this is the wall's true. That one door led us into this space, into this covenant group. Look! There's a multitude of doors leading from this space. Whoa, where do they all go? All kinds of different places. Some of them lead to Bible studies because what's happened in this group has led some members to want to delve deeper into the scriptures. Some of them lead to service opportunities with the homeless, with the poor downtown, or with the Passage Charter School because this group is all about how our faith intersects with doing justice in the world. Some of them lead to advocacy opportunities, advocating for fair living wages or for unfair housing practices to end, or for fair trade products to become more readily available. Because this group has spent a lot of time exploring the difference between justice and charity, and the need for both. That's so cool that being a part of one group can lead to so many other ways of engaging your faith. Yes, that's church. But it's so much more than what we've called church. It's more than a place we go once or twice a week. I guess what I'm saying is it's something we are. Something we do. We really do need to rethink church. Yeah. <laughs>
Welcome. Welcome. You guys look like you're here to help. The box of supplies is right there, and there are a list of what goes in each health kit posted around the room. Find us on the assembly line. Wow, this is amazing. Where are all these health kits going? We don't really know. A few years back, we made some for the victims of the earthquake in Haiti. But before that, we made some for the victims of Hurricane Katrina in the Gulf. We're not sure where these will go. All we know is that somebody needs them. It's a part of our church's health outreach ministry. The health kits are a way to remind people with the most basic necessities they've had everything wiped out. It's a way to connect with people when they're most vulnerable. And it's a way to help them get back on their feet. Our church also sponsors well digging through living water. And our youth group, and our youth group is really involved in nothing but nets to stop the spread of malaria. They had a basketball shoot for that. It was pretty cool. <coughs> we try to stay connected with the local community through supporting the food bank, community services agency, Habitat for Humanity, things like that. And we try to stay connected with the world by assembling health kits, sponsoring wells. And every year, we have some hands-on mission trips where we can actually do some of the work. And more importantly, where we can meet and interact with the people in the communities we're trying to connect with. Our goal is to help prevent the conditions that contribute to poverty and disease in the world, and that by taking part in these mission trips, we are constantly reminded of the real people affected. For us, it's keeping the church in the world, where we're called to feed, clothe, and house God's children. Oh,
going on all around us that I really wasn't aware of. Yeah, I thought church was a place my parents dragged me to every Sunday. I had no idea there was so much more happening. Or at least so much more that could be happening. Yeah, it seems like a lot of churches are still stuck in that one hour a week mentality. And I have the feeling we've only seen a tiny fraction of what's going on. For sure, and even a tinier fraction of what could be going on. But so many people just don't get it. They think church is what it always has been. That hour on Sunday when they sing three hymns, <gasps> pray a prayer, hear their pastor talk about Matt Cain's perfect game, Go for Go Giants! and then go home and eat a pot roast. Oh, and that's where you guys come in. For some of you, church was a boring obligation. For others of you, it was a great social outlet. And for some of you, it's been the way that you connect with God and with your Christian faith. But I think all of us, or at least most of us, have had some kind of a disconnect between our church life and our real life. Yeah, there was church, and then there was everything else. Which leads a lot of people to come to the conclusion that church is just irrelevant. It doesn't connect with the rest of our lives. But being the church means living it out with all of our lives. Not just on Sundays, but on the other six days as well.
board building. Exactly. And the added benefit is that we get to sleep in on Sundays and don't have to sit through all that boring worship stuff. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. We still need to gather together to worship, to hear God's word, to sing God's praises. If there's something boring about that, we definitely miss the point. Okay, but I thought it was all about being out in the world, living the Christian message, and, and being the church wherever we are. It is. That's exactly what it is. And unless we have a place of grounding, a place of connection, a place where we can get our spirits renewed and our faith re-inspired, we won't last long out in the world. Everything we do as the church in the world needs to come from this place of connection, inspiration, worship, and renewal. Once again, our model for this is Jesus. If you look in the gospel stories, Jesus was always balancing time spent out in the community, healing, teaching, and preaching, with time spent in prayer, reflection, and worship. One didn't happen without the other. Yeah, but I can find inspiration and renewal anywhere. I can find God out in nature, by myself. I don't need this building to make it happen. It's not about the building, it's about what happens in the building. Oh. Right, and we hear people say all the time, oh, I find God in music, or in nature, or in reading books on spirituality or in meditating, all of which is awesome. We do find God in those places, but the church, God's vision for how we live out our faith is a community. It happens in community. That's what Jesus meant when he said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there also. It's not that we don't find God by ourselves. Jesus found God in meditation in nature also. He used nature as examples of God's abundance and love when he said things like, consider the lilies of the field. But we worship God. We learn about God, we celebrate God, we grow closer to God in community, in church. But we find community everywhere, in sports teams, in march band, in school choir, in clubs, in scouting, even service organizations. Of course we do, and all of that is important. We are created to be social beings, and it is awesome that we share interests and can work together towards a common goal. But none of those are church. But what's the difference? Um, duh, the difference is God. <laughs> yeah, but I found God in my choir, at school. You don't need church to find God. No, God is everywhere, but the church is the body of Christ. It is where we come for rest, renewal, and reflection, for connection, conversation, and communion. It is both launching pad and safe landing. It is home in the sense that it is where we can and do always return for sustenance, rejuvenation, love, and nurture only to go out into the world with what we've been filled with. Unless we continually return to this place of connection and renewal, we will burn out. God's calling us to wrap our arms around the whole world, to embrace creation and connect with all of humanity. But if you just go wide without going deep, you'll find yourself feeling drained and empty before you know it. We can't be the church unless we're in the church. It helps us remember why we're doing what we're doing. Right. It helps us remember. Remember who we are, remember whose we are, and remember to always be listening for the call of God in our lives. Is that why communion talks about remembering? Yes, communion is remembering. Remembering the love of God, a love embodied in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And also in remembering our connection as part of the body. Communion, our union with, with each other, with Jesus, with God. The church is the body of Christ, the communion of believers. Not a building, not a collection of ancient creeds or tired saints or outdated traditions, but something vibrant and growing and open and changing. Because that's what happens when relationships are healthy, strong, and loving. So if the church is a healthy, strong, and loving relationship between us and God, then it has to be alive and growing and open and changing. A healthy, alive, growing, open, loving church is a place where we can and should return week after week after week to find strength and encouragement and nurture and sustenance and courage and inspiration and community so that we can go out into a world that so desperately needs those things, only to return to the church again, to be recharged. Originally, Sunday wasn't the last day of the weekend, but the first day of the week. Beginning the week with worship, with connection, with community and communion, empowers us to live out the gospel the rest of the week. We gather to remind ourselves of that, of that connection, to celebrate what we've experienced during the week, to be inspired, 
to go deeper with God and further into the world, to hear and reflect on the word of God, and to be the body of Christ. Mm
journey. It seems sad that more people haven't heard this message. Yeah, it feels like the world no longer needs church. Are you kidding? The world needs it more than ever. It's just that in a lot of cases, the church has forgotten how to engage the world and has spent too much time closing and locking doors rather than opening them. But you guys, we have to stop thinking of the church as them and realize that it's us. We are the ones that can change things. In fact, you're, <laughs> we're the ones who already are changing things. We're here. We're thinking about it, we're talking about it, we're singing about it, and we are doing it. The church is only as good and as real and as effective as the people who are in it. Right here, in this place, in this time, we have the opportunity to change everything. We have the opportunity to see new doors open and to close old doors that need closing and to live out the message of God's love for all creation that Jesus continues to teach us and show us. Let's kick open the doors. Yeah. Open them wide. Time for church.
doors with the knowledge that we would challenge you to rethink church in new ways. Thank you for being bold enough to believe that God could possibly be waiting for you out there, not simply longing for you in here. The scriptures remind us over and over and over to be in the world. And it is our prayer tonight that you will join us to make church a verb, something you do, not simply something that you are. So God is calling you, is calling us to open the doors of our hearts, in our minds, in our churches, in our worship centers, to discover the powerful, powerful invitation to rethink church in new and radical ways. We thank you for being with us tonight, and we'd like to take this time now to take the offering for the Passage Charter School. Please give generously for this amazing project in your community.
by the uh, reaction that was depicted to the pastor's sermon. <laughs> and, uh, and I would like to go into the Hebrew text as to why. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, actually, we're not going into the Hebrew text, because it's so true! <laughs> I can't stand that when that happens. I gotta thank Dirk and Carol so very much. Uh, and here's the thing. Uh, I gotta thank the cast and the crew so very much. And here's the thing, you gotta call your folks, you gotta call your friends back home and say, I'm sorry, we're not coming home as soon as we thought, because we're gonna be in Montrose on Sunday for both worship services. <laughs> sing and not lose their breath, and let them dance and not lose their strength, God. Bless them and keep them. Make your face to shine upon them. Lift up your countenance upon them. And God, give peace to them. Give peace to our communities. Give peace to our churches. Give peace to the world. Mm. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And in response to all that we've heard and the gospel that's been shared, would the people of God say after me, we go joyfully. We go joyfully to love all, to love all, to serve all, to serve all, and to share the gospel of Jesus with the world. To share the gospel of Jesus with the world.